Hey guys, just a quick step-by-step -step video of this wall I painted recently, and you can see this from the street real well. So here's where I started with the electro pounce machine, which generates electricity into a needle that perforates paper. And the when I first bought this about 30 years ago, I didn't read the instructions very well and realized that you had to ground wire the unit to the metal you're working on. Needless to say, that was very shocking. Let you listen to the sparkling um, electricity that's being generated, putting little holes inside the paper, allowing me to transfer charcoal through it, that you can apply this on anything. I'm using a straight edge here to a little sparkle. It kind of flares up if you hold it on the paper too long. So this is how you get a transfer done. And then um, this is the wall prime, cleaned and primed and it was kind of cold so I had to heat up the wall and dry up all the condensation on it with my um, torch and then here's me transferring the charcoal through the, through the pattern onto the primed wall. That's a concrete primer. There you can see the charcoal has been transferred through. Now I just start out with rolling it in all the big areas and come back with a, a Fitch brush. That's the name of this type of brush. Uh, the bristles are very stiff, which allows you to work on real rough surfaces. And so this is what I'll be doing. It's just continuing to uh, work my way all the way down the wall and uh, laying down this maroon color to start out with. Now, I obviously couldn't fit the roll in there, so I gotta brush my way through the, between the uh, arrow panel and the letters. And now I'm just finishing off the bottom. I could have taped that off, um, but fresh paint is sketchy, especially on, on uh, concrete, unless it's cured. Because there's a drying time, and then there's a curing time, especially for lettering enamels that we use. Uh, takes a long time for this paint to cure, but it doesn't take too long for it to dry. So I, the uh, duct tape on the very bottom is on the bare concrete, so I'm not concerned with that. I'm not concerned with the lines being um, perfectly tight on, around the pattern because I'm going to um, black line this later all the way around. Now I'm filling the letters in with white. This is allowing me to just do one coat because I'm on white primer using a foam brush because I realized that it was going very well uh, and it's a little smoother than I thought and um, so I was allowed to use that and it just kind of goes a lot faster when you can use that foam brush. There were some rough spots on the concrete where um, where there was just areas that were had whatever for whatever reason and here's me filling in the arrow getting everybody to go in, in the right direction and I'm just like I said, I don't, I'm not real concerned with making it perfect, just getting up to the line. And then I'll, when it comes time for the black outline, then I'll uh, tighten things up. And this is where I start the uh, black outline. I had so much success using the foam brush for the other areas that I decided to just use the foam brush for this. And it went real well. If this was concrete was any rougher, I would have had to use the fidge brush to cut in with. It would have also taken much longer. This actually um, speeds up the process. There's my scaffolding on four by fours with a blanket. As you get older, you look for more ways to uh, create comfort while you're doing this and make it easier on your back. So this was, this seemed to work out real, real well. It's better than sitting in the mud and the ivy. And here I am getting down to the end of the, end of the line. And starting on the arrow, kind of like a little racetrack now, working my way down. And I did both the top and the bottom at the same time because I was already laying down there, so I might as well just um, do as much as I can in one spot. Economy of motion, that's what it's all about. Economy of motion. Now, I'm, uh, now since I had such a um, 
thick layer of enamel on that with the green, I was able to use my brush and it flowed real well. And since it's black, I was able to use a reducer in the paint, the lettering enamel paint, not thinner, not turpentine, because that actually uh, reduces the, the uh, quality of the paint when you do that, it makes it much thinner. But if you use a reducer made specifically for this paint, it keeps the viscosity, the thickness of the paint, or not the thickness, but the, um, the quality of the paint remains. And that's how you can get that real, you know, nice black op opacity that way. So I'm just going to work my way down and jump all the way down. Those are drain holes that you see for water that are kind of in the middle of the elements. Um, so that's, and then any drips, I'll just come back and touch up. That's kind of the name of the game with, with paint on a wall, especially on a rough wall, you're going to get drips. And I'm just finishing up there. Whole job took about eight hours from sketch to driving away. And there it is. Happy customers and an impactful sign that they can see from the road. Thanks for watching. Happy painting.